And here come our athletes for the first semi-final here on Compound Saturday. Alessandra Escriano there on target number two will go up against Slovenia's Toya Ellison. Well, here we have Alejandra Vascarano of Colombia against Ellison of Slovenia. Ellison came through the ranking round 16th. Vascarano was fifth. Vascarano will play a big part in this important competition, the final stage. Stage winners go to the final in Yankton, South Dakota. I'm Karen Bashir, and joining me for this session as always, our expert analyst, Nikki Hunt. Nikki, a lot to play for. Really is a lot to play for. All of these archers want to be at that main event, the World Cup Finals. Well, we will get this individual match underway. Alejandra Buscano of Colombia is vying for the win here. Gets the match underway with a 10. As I said, the scoring we expect to be very high here. Ty Allison competing in a final for the first time since becoming a mother, also with a good sight of Nikki. Yeah, both archers straight into the 10, exactly what you needed here. Put the pressure on, really perfect conditions, a little bit of rain. Yeah, it's just started, hasn't it? Just a little bit of precipitation. Look, uh, we said the scoring was going to be high. We're expecting this to be well, looking for the odd nine here. Oh, and that's it. That, I think, is on the line and will get marked as a nine. But already an opportunity for Toya Ellison. And she's dropped it into the nine as well. So, do you think that rain might be playing a part? It looks fairly light from what we can see. With the compounders, I don't think it's going to really make that much difference. I mean, it can push the arrows down a little bit if you've got heavy rain, but the speed these arrows are flying at, we're at 50 metres. I don't think it's going to make a massive difference here. Well, all square between the pair. Now, what we do know already is that we've got some places locked in for, uh, for Yankton. We know... Uh, that Paige Pierce, uh, Becerra herself, who's competing in the second semi final, and Toy Ellison here have already qualified, Nikki. Yep, they've come through on the points, haven't they? And then we've got Valdez and Chanya Galantin, who have also won the first two stages. So those guys seem to be already locked in. And uh, glad you mentioned the stage winners there, because Nora Valdez uh, has booked her spot uh, for Colombia. And, and this is why Escano's result here is so important because the five-time Hyundai Archery World Champion who's in the second semi-final may not make it. That's right. Only two archers from each country can make the World Cup finals. All square here. Escano really is the one to watch in this semi-final. Bit of a longer hold and a little bit of movement up and down there as well. Yeah, not just not settling quite in. Another low arrow. I yeah, want to talk about uh, Scano being the one to watch. It's not because we don't think Ellison's got a chance. We know <laughs> that Ellison is going to be going to the finals. It's Scano who could upset the apple cart here. They're both starting with uh, with nines here. Conditions have just started to change a little bit, and maybe it's not necessarily going to affect the scores, but perhaps it's just distracting them a bit. Yeah, I, th I think probably like the pressure they're under as well. Um, you know, particularly Alejandra, you know, really wanting to, to win this match. It's really important for her, a lot at stake. So it's another 29 for 
for Skerno, but of course it's that big score of 58 that we need to focus on because scores are accumulative and they've matched each other again. So 258. We have five ends to complete here. That's uh, the conclusion of end number two. Can't really see any any difference between them. They they're, they're matching each other literally arrow for arrow. Yeah, there's nothing in it, is there at all? It's going to be a very, very close match, I think, all the way through. Um, as we look at uh, the coaches, just checking the arrows that have been returned from the first end, and there's that knock you're talking about. Cracks or any damage. Also flicking through the fletchings there as well to make sure they're all stuck down well. If one of those became unstuck it could flap around cause a bit of drag and that could cause the arrow to go low so that might be where I was just having a look you know we had a low arrow in the start was it a problem with the arrow rather than the archer yeah very close look to where Alison nodding her head in approval of her own shot all square here though 58 apiece as we go to end number three and it's Colombia's Alejandra Oscano who will shoot first Little adjustment to the site. Now that is exceptionally close. It's been called a 10 in venue, but marked as a 9 on the scorecard. So I'm guessing that first arrow from Ellison will go to a measure. Yeah, it probably will. Look pretty close to me. I would think it may be in, but we'll have to wait for official confirmation. So unquestioned perfect 30 for Oscano. Bit of pressure on this arrow, knowing that oh that first one's going for a measure. But that's her best shot so far, looking very determined. Toya Ellison, mm, what's she doing there? Giving her peep sight clean? Yep, she's probably got a little bit of water in there. Some of the raindrops just going down. She may have a lens in there. So the rain has just settled on the lens, perhaps. Uh, she needs to clean it out. She can't see properly, so that's an issue. You get different types of peep sights. Um, some shoot with a, a little lens in, a clarifier, so it changes the image of the scope. Um, I used to shoot without, I used to shoot uh, like an open hole. Um, and again, you can get a raindrop in those, but you can just literally, some archers carry around a little puffer um, that you see with cameras, lenses and that sort of thing these days, and they just squirt a bit of air through there, which helps clear that drop of rain out. But yeah, it's, it can be an issue in these conditions. Brilliant uh, close-ups of the athletes here. And there is that peep sight being cleaned. We saw with uh, Oskiano's shot as well, that type of forces that go through that bow, you saw it vibrating and wobbling. It, if it hits a, a resonance, I'm sorry, my physics is a little bit dated now, but uh, if you get a resonance, you can see uh, the bow wobbling. And of course, the arrow does that as well as it leaves the, uh, leaves the bow. Does indeed, as the arrow comes out, is a paradox of with compound. It's kind of up and down as it leaves the bow. Fiscano into the ten, and we have her confirmation that that first arrow from Ellison was also a ten in the last set. So they are all square. We're all square. And it is now a question of will that nine be the deciding arrow? Yes. Skarno looks really dialed in, doesn't she? Yeah, she's settled into this match now. Showing us what she's made of. Oh! 
good grouping and another perfect from Escano to give her 118. Those two nines could be telling. Lisa Finishes with a 10 for a 28. Nikki, all indications from our team session suggest that those nines really do make a difference today. Yeah, because the conditions, you know, particularly there being really no wind, which is pretty unheard of, um, you know, opening up a nine is a big gap, um, especially in compound. So, yeah, you know, she's always got to come out. She's got to put the pressure on. She'll be shooting first, and really she needs a clean 30 to have a chance here. Yeah, to put the pressure on, she might say shooting first. Uh, you can see the rain now coming down just a little bit heavier, which may actually be of benefit to Alison. But let's look at Oscano here, because she is vying for that win. She knows she needs it, and this is a perfect position for her. And after, let's not forget, we had the Olympic qualifier here. These athletes have effectively been in a, a contained bubble for over 10 days now. And uh, you'd think on the well, penultimate day, I'm guessing they're, they're going home tomorrow or the day after, um, that you know a little bit of pressure might make a lot of a difference given the lockup they've experienced. Time for the fifth and final end. And it's another nine, this time high. Yeah, I think, you know, mental fatigue can, can play a part. Like you said, that it's been a long week and, uh, you know, it's who can get all the way through this week on top four mentally and physically. to the 10, but Ellison is now looking for her opponent to make a mistake. And it just doesn't look like it's going to happen with the arrows running out. It's the 10th 10 in a row for Eschiano. Finishes with a 29 and a 145, but as you can see, big opportunity here likely to be taken oh just drops it into the nine for a 29 but a brilliant performance from Alejandra Aschiano uh, you have to say she kept the power down on the accelerator at the right time Ellison just faltering in the fourth there two nines open the door a respectful fist bump by the looks of things oh it's going to be a hug well, they have been locked up in the same hotel for 10 days in a COVID-secure bubble. But it is Uscano who comes through that first semi-final over Ellison. Ellison knows she's going to Yankton for the World Cup finals. Uscano is keeping her flight booking open. She needs to win to guarantee her place. She's done the first part of the job and is into the final. Well, we talked about high scores. We talked about nines making a difference. Clearly, that was the case there. But I think the rain is starting to play a little bit of part in this. The peep site having to be cleaned. Perhaps the grip is not quite what it would be when if it was completely dry. 